Hey guys, it's Heart, and today I'm going to be doing a different style of video. And this is going to be kind of like a drama channel video because I've always wanted to do one and I always have admired the amount of research and work that goes into them. So I wanted to try it out myself. It might not get that many views, but I'm kind of proud of it and I wrote a long kind of essay thing about it. So let's get started. American Girl is a world-renowned company despite its name. They specialize in creating 18-inch dolls and are marketed in different lines such as the Girl of the Year collection, the Truly Me line, the Contemporary line, and the Historical line. It seems as though there is a doll for every girl. They also have targeted towards their younger audience called Bitty Babies and Wally Wishers. Before American Girl was known by its current name, it was known as Pleasant Company. It was founded in 1986 by Pleasant Rowland and originally offered three dolls. Molly McIntyre, Samantha Parkington, and Kirsten Larson, all who have historically accurate backstories set in different time periods. The dolls also came with books, thus encouraging historical education in younger girls. There is no doubt that American Girl is a very business-savvy company. They have many facets to the original idea of 18-inch dolls. They offer magazines, free catalogs, interactive websites, the doll hospital, and the books that were previously mentioned. A large fan base has formed, including American Girl Instagram, where fans post pictures of their dolls, and AGTube, where fans post videos of their dolls. Upon hearing this, you may be imagining little girls taking photos or videos of their dolls on their parents' iPhones. However, this community is very talented and often use DSLRs to create professional and creative photos of their dolls. With the newfound fandoms, American Girl was more successful than ever. They practically were receiving free advertising for their products, with dolls being featured in YouTube videos via stop motions and also on Instagram. Their fans are of all ages from 6 years old to 70 years old. This is the first problem. American Girl does not do a good job of catering towards all of their audiences. Most of their marketing strategies, website layout, and outfits and accessories that are sold are targeted towards younger girls, mostly of the ages 8 through 12. While a lot of their fans are younger, the majority are teen or adult collectors. A lot of older collectors, including me, don't frequently buy anything other than dolls from American Girl. The outfits and accessories that are sold are often aggressively girly and are clearly targeted towards 8 to 12 year olds. Again, there is no problem with having outfits that may be more appealing to the younger audience. On the other hand, the biggest money makers for American Girl are teen and adult collectors because they have jobs. While some older collectors may love the outfits that American Girl releases, a lot of collectors have also asked American Girl for more modern and trendy pieces. Being such a money fueled company, you would think that they would optimize their income by creating outfits that would appeal to all audiences. Another issue is the price point of their products. The price of an 18-inch doll has fluctuated over the years, in some part due to inflation. However, inflation is not the only culprit. An 18-inch doll in 2020 costs $110. Other 18-inch brands, such as Our Generation, run their dolls at about $25 to $50. I will say American Girl is known for the quality of their dolls, although they have gone through a few scandals over the years. For example, the dolls used to have neckties that attached the head to the body, but that was changed in 2016 when they switched out the ties for zip ties. A lot of collectors concluded that this was to stop customizations by fans, which was causing them to lose money in sales. Another scandal was the perma panties, where American Girl switched out the traditional removable underwear that came with their dolls for sewn-in underwear, which was not removable. Also at this time, the quality of the bodies of the dolls were inarguably worse and cheaper looking. The several scandals that American Girl has gone through involving the quality of their dolls has caused loss of support amongst collectors. A lot of collectors have even veered away from buying directly from American Girl. Perhaps the biggest issue with an American Girl is their lack of representation through their dolls. America is known as a melting pot with great racial diversity. Although the representation at American Girl has gotten better throughout the years, it is nowhere near perfect. There is a significant lack of dolls of color in all collections. The Truly Me line is notorious for having a doll for each girl, however, it is clear that this is not the case. Within the Girl of the Year line, most of the dolls of color are also half white. Of course, there's nothing wrong with being half white because, you know, I literally am, but there needs to be more representation. Barisol Luna is the only 100% Latina doll, Gabriella McBard is the only 100% black doll, and Jess McConnell is the only Asian doll despite her being 50% white as well. Despite the community demanding representation and racial equality, it doesn't seem like American Girl is trying their hardest. They have released a statement on their steps towards racial equality following the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement, but it should not have taken them that long and it seems like performance activism. 
I am in no way applying that American Girl is racist or extremely problematic, but I do think that they don't take feedback seriously or to heart. They are known for getting somewhat defensive when it comes to critiques from fans, especially those who are not afraid to call them out. I want to end this video by saying that I used to be afraid to say anything negative about American Girl as they were my favorite brand and supplied me with my YouTube career through their products. I always wanted to work with them and as a result, I censored myself. But I no longer care because after all this time of me supporting and promoting their company, they have never reached out and they stopped responding to my emails regarding a meet and greet. So I decided to just say what I really feel. I'm so grateful to American Girl for giving me something to make YouTube videos about, but I do love this company enough where I do want to see it improve, so I am giving my critiques, even though we know they are not too good at taking them. Thanks for watching.